Here's your Christmas present. Oh wow, you shouldn't have gotten me a Christmas present. I don't care. Whoa! Christmas movies? A fruitcake Christmas? Mm. Strawberry shortcake Berry Merry Christmas? Shrek yeah, the no. Halls? Holly and Hal Moose are uplifting Christmas adventure? Oh. Duck Dynasty? I'm yeah. Dreaming of a Redneck Christmas? Oh, the yeah, Nativity? A a Korean bootleg DVD? Santa Buddies? <laughs> the Legend of Santa Paws? Mm. Really Wooly? The Gift of Christmas? I love you. You're my best friend. Happy holidays. Hey everybody, Peeps here! One of my favorite hobbies is to go to the thrift store, and I've done a lot of different thrift store videos on this channel. We've done 10 episodes of Goodwill Games, we've done a couple episodes of Goodwill Garbage, and I figured it was time to do a new series on Goodwill stuff, Goodwill Movies. Where I get movies from the thrift store, we watch them and talk about them on the videos. It's a very complicated subject. Uh, let me know if you need it to be explained in further detail. Considering it's the Christmas season, I figured we could do a Christmas-themed episode. The only problem is, all the Christmas movies I found really sucked. So these are the worst Christmas movies I could find at the thrift store. Up first, I have what is sure to be a Christmas classic uh, in my household in the future. Fairy Christmas. A Fairy Christmas, to be specific. They really should have called it a very Fairy Christmas. That would have been... Come on. The movie starts off with two fairies flying to see Santa, Blonde Hair Fairy and Brown Hair Fairy. I'm pretty sure they have actual names, I just don't care. You're just in time. I'm pleased to invite a new fairy to help with the naughty and nice list. Our good friend, Brown Hair Fairy. So Brown Hair Fairy has been bestowed the honor of becoming a child spy. No, not that kind. That kind. <laughs> For some reason, Blonde Hair Fairy is jealous of Brown Hair Fairy, even though she's already employed by Santa to spy on children, so I don't really know what she's so mad about. Do you really think I can do this? <laughs> no! Brown Hair Fairy goes to spy on her very first child, her human equivalent in this story, Brown Hair Girl. Don't worry about the little spoiler there, it's really not very subtle. On a new adventure. Nervous, just a bit. Helping Santa prepare. I am scared! I admit! Brown hair girl has had to move a lot in her life, and she's hoping that this new home is her last. New beginning, moving on, a home where I'll find. If this song goes longer, I hope that I die. Also, I'm sorry, but her mom is way out of her dad's league. I'm just saying what everyone else is thinking, all right? A time where I'll shine. Whoa. <laughs> One place I definitely do not want to shine is the top of my head. This video is sponsored by Keeps. Did you know that two out of three guys will experience hair loss by the time they're 35? No! This is definitely something I worry about, seeing as how male pattern baldness has a history in my family. <clears throat> but luckily for us, Keeps has us covered. Keeps is an online subscription service that offers doctor-recommended hair loss treatments that are clinically proven to combat the symptoms of hair loss. All their plans are even personalized and shipped straight to your house. You never have to visit a doctor and you never even have to leave your house. Whew. Well, that's good to know. Whether you want to prevent hair loss or just take better care of the hair you have, Keeps is here to help you out. Hair loss stops with Keeps. They even give you refill reminders. Hair loss stops with Keeps. Get 50% off your order by going to keeps.com slash pbg. That's keeps.com slash pbg. Or use the link in the description. Wow. 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 Start taking care of your hair today. And thanks again to Keeps for sponsoring. After moving, Brown Hair Girl has her very first day of school on December 24th. Rough. And she introduces herself to her classmates. A new kid? Right before Christmas? Too weird. Yeah. yeah, weird. Yeah, yeah, super weird. Yeah. I guess. I moved here yesterday, a week before Christmas. I don't really know why I did that. I guess I didn't do it. My mom and dad did. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh... She's weird. Yeah, yeah. weird. weird. 
We then jump back to the fairy world, where we get our first real look at how the fairies spy on the children through magical paintings. How do they work exactly? I have no idea. Despite being incredibly vital to the storyline, they're never explained at all. I mean, what about kids that don't have paintings? Do they just not get any presents? I mean, I guess later in the movie, she says that she doesn't even know where she got the painting and that she's just always had it. I've always had it. So I guess Santa provides the paintings? But even then, like, what if you you don't put it up. What, like, does Santa have some kind of telepathic power to compel you to put the painting on the wall? Put the picture on the wall. Put the picture on the wall. Put the picture on the wall. Whoa, where'd I get this painting? I don't like it. Put the painting on the wall, kid! Okay. I was going to. Don't make me drag you in there! Just like up here? Hi, honey. Mom. So her mom shows up at her school on her first day and invites her whole class to a Christmas party on Christmas, which is tomorrow. But people must be too busy for a party on Christmas Day. Yeah, that's kind of a good point, Mom. First day of school is going great. So blonde hair girl really hates brown hair girl because she's new on Christmas, even though that doesn't make any sense. And also because she's going to get some presents for Christmas, even though that doesn't make any sense. Neither of these blonde characters have any reason to hate their brunette equivalent. They just do because plot. So the human girls sabotage the Christmas party, spread a bunch of rumors, and be mean because reasons. So the brown hair fairy goes to cheer up brown hair human, even though blonde hair fairy says she's not allowed to. Who are you? I'm a fairy. A fairy? I came through your painting? My world's on the other side. You'd have to see it to believe it. <laughs> oh. Can you leave? <laughs> so she takes her into the painting and into fairy world. You won't believe what the fairy world does for Christmas. Oh, man. Fireworks? Fairy magic? Whatever it is, it's gonna be paper snowflakes. Cool. Whatever, I'll take anything as long as they don't start singing again. Oh, God dang it! Bells are ringing everywhere, casting something everywhere, something something so. The chorus for this song is literally just fairy world, fairy world, fairy, fairy, fairy world, fairy world, fairy world, fairy, fairy, fairy world. Fairy world, fairy world, fairy, fairy, fairy world. I've had this song stuck in my head for two weeks. These lyrics aren't just lazy, they also make no sense at all. If fairies made a movie called A Human Christmas, would all the people just be walking around going, Human world, human world, human, human, human world. After all the singing, Fairy Girl realizes that she's way behind on her naughty and nice list, so Human Girl decides to help her spy on her entire class, because those are the only kids on her list. There's definitely nothing unethical about this. While invading the privacy of her new peers, she learns that the hench girls who follow blonde hair human around are only mean because they're afraid of her, and the blonde hair girl is only mean because she's scared of her mom. So brown hair girl decides that they should all go on the nice list, despite what they've done to her. Remember kids, it doesn't matter what terrible atrocities you commit, as long as you did them because you were scared. Personally, I'm scared of fairies being alive, so according to this movie, it's perfectly okay if I rectify that. We did it! I can take my list to Santa! Unfortunately, blonde hair fairy catches them spying on all of her friends in their private bedrooms, again, totally not creepy at all, and blackmails them into letting her complete the list instead. And on top of that, she puts the brown hair human girl on the naughty list. It was already shown earlier in the movie that her parents bought her some presents, but once she was put on the naughty list, they instantly lose them. So not only does he spy on children throughout the world, he's also a straight up extortion. Eventually, everything gets worked out between the kids after Blonde Hair Fairy confesses to Santa, to which he responds, Cause I know what happened. Which begs the question, if Santa knows everything that's happening like some kind of god, why does he even need the fairies to begin with? My theory is that he just keeps them around as a legal out for when he inevitably gets raided by the FBI. Hey, I had no idea any of this was happening. I don't have a direct feed from those creepy paintings straight into my computer, which I conveniently destroyed right before you got here. It was the fairies, all right? The fairies!
I've talked about a few different movies on this channel in the past, but I've never actually done a video on a live action movie, and we have the very first live action movie in the channel history. Unfortunately, it's homeless for the holidays and not something better than that. I'm saying that like it was me that chose to talk about it. <laughs> I don't know anything about this movie going in other than it's produced by iproducefilms.com, which I'm sorry to say does not sound very promising. Homeless for the Holidays stars our main character, Jack Baker, AKA young Adam Sandler. Jack is apparently super talented and successful. I'm not very good at business myself, but I'm pretty sure if you say words out loud to a big circle of table people and uh, they all start clapping, that's a good thing, baby. His son, despite being spoiled his entire life, is very concerned about other families who are struggling through the holidays. Some of these people can't even afford Christmas presents. Yeah, all the good toys are still in stock. He is unamused. Be normal. Ugh, dad doesn't care about people who are homeless for the holidays? If only he could find himself in a super ironic situation and get what's coming to him and then learn a valuable lesson in the process. Ugh, that's probably not gonna happen. No cell phone. Be normal. While walking down the street, Jack meets a Santa guy who says, May your life be forever changed from this day forward. Huh. Well, that didn't sound ominous at all. As the trope goes, Jack is too busy with work to spend time with his family for the holidays. Something that his wife is quick to remind him of. You know what I want for Christmas, Jack? You. And I want you, even if for just a few days. I swear 80% of her lines are just her yelling at him. But hey, at least things at work are going well. I'm sold. After giving the worst wink of all time, Jack's boss reminds him of just how vital he is to the company, and then some other guy makes a fool of himself, but we'll worry about him later. The next morning, things are going crazy! Mr. Baker, can I get a comment, sir? Mr. Baker, Mr. Baker, Mr. Baker. The label, sir. Are you going to comment on the label? Are any of you going to die? The label, you're going to comment on the label. On a label on, on your table for a, a label. It turns out that someone signed off on a submission for one of their cleaning products that says, "Do now inhale fumes." Even though he makes it clear he didn't do it, he's told that he has to take the fall and be publicly fired so the company can avoid backlash. But he is given a promise that they'll rehire him once all the drama dies down. Jack, they want to talk to you. Oh no, not they. <laughs> After being fired, Jack lays around for a few days waiting for the call he was promised until his wife tells him to get a job! I told you he was gonna call me! If only we could all find someone so supportive. Ooh. Yeah. Looking for a job. Looking for a job. This guy is looking for a job, but he can't get one. He can't find a job. What do you know? What do you know? There ain't no jobs up in this hole. He can't get no dough. His family will be out Are you in the snow. Me right now? Are you kidding me? Kidding me? No. Cause he's the guy that poisons people. After a long and unsuccessful job hunt, Jack's wife yells at him some more. We need an income. I have had a long day. And no money to show for it. He might as well have been here. She was the one who was like, get off your butt and find a job. Now she's like, why aren't you ever home? Make up your freaking mind. You cannot talk to me like that. Spoiler alert. She talks to him like that. Eventually, he gets a job at a fast food joint called Penguin Point, where he has to wear a penguin outfit. The exact penguin outfit that I own. Hey, maybe I could be the next director for iproducefilms.com. You better watch out, um... Uh... Who directed this? <laughs> George A. Johnson? I'm coming for your job! After getting his first Penguin Point check, they go grocery shopping in this completely pointless, but very long, scene with an equally pointless, but very over the top, manager character who goes, BOOM! A bunch of times while taking pictures at customers for some reason. The scene 100% should have been cut from the movie and editing, but not only was it not cut, apparently the actor for this guy, Brad Stein, was important enough to be featured on the front of the box. BOOM! 
Then there's this whole entire subplot where his wife applies for food stamps and she goes on and on and on about how great food stamps are. We've been paying for other people to use them for years. They're designed to help people like us who need help in a bind. I was beginning to wonder if this was actually sponsored by the government or something to like advertise food stamps, but apparently not because eventually she goes off on this long, super intense rant that just comes completely out of left field about how the government just has food stamps to keep people dependent on the government or something. The rules? Who made these rules? Has anyone questioned their motives? She's just screaming super loudly at this lady for like two minutes straight as if she personally is the one who created the laws. And become completely dependent upon you. <laughs> The script refers to her as if she is a likable character multiple times throughout the movie, but it fails to actually demonstrate that at any point to the audience. Eventually, Jack's former employer discovers that a competing company is interested in hiring him, and since he's so good at his job, they have to put a stop to it. But instead of hiring him back, they decide to come up with some crazy scheme to get that annoying guy from earlier to trick him into not working with the competitor so he can come back to work for them. But, and this is the real genius, his part uh they don't hire him back even though he's supposedly the best at whatever this job is ever so much so that everyone wants to hire him but they won't hire him because he's unhireable even though everybody else wants to and is going to hire him i apologize if that doesn't make any sense but uh just trust me it doesn't make sense in the movie either but whatever it's christmas normal. The movie goes on for a lot longer than it needs to, by the way, and eventually they lose power in their home, but since Jack has learned so much about the joy of Christmas or whatever, he gives his last 40 bucks to a homeless guy instead of feeding his family the Chinese buffet that he promised them. And don't worry, it's not like they were excited for it or anything. We're going Chinese! We're going Chinese! But then Karma pays him back as a random girl at church gives him like 400 bucks that she somehow raised by selling Christmas cards? Uh, who even is this girl again, by the way? Then the creepy Santa guy, who's been spying on him through the whole movie, starts talking about how sucky his life is and tries to cheer him up. How do you know I'm not just a kindly old man who cares? There's no such thing. No one really cares about anyone else. This girl literally just gave him like $400. What is he talking about? What if that person was willing to help you get your life back together again? People like that don't exist. It just happened! He just did it too, like two minutes ago! For the past 30 minutes of the movie, he's been all cheery and generous despite his crappy situation, but the moment someone turns around and does something nice for him, he 180s and is completely cynical again? This doesn't make any sense! Nothing in this movie makes sense! The personality shifts of Jack make no sense. There's no character development at all for the son who's completely good-natured right from the start of the movie even though he has no good role model. The actions of the people from his job don't make any sense. The daughter honestly doesn't even need to be here. She adds nothing to the table. And the mom? Do you see what you're doing here? The rules? Who made these rules? You're not helping people. You're the one too <laughs> No complaints there. You'd think the characters in Homeless for the Holidays being homeless would be a pretty big part of the story, but no, they don't become homeless until an hour and 35 minutes into the movie, which is only an hour and 40 minutes long. Luckily for them, they move into the nicest homeless tent shelter I have ever seen in my life. And before you know it, that company that wanted to hire him hires him and they're rich again. Cool. And it appears the creepy Santa, or God, or whoever this character is supposed to be, is now going to ruin this jerk guy's life also. May your life be forever changed from this day forward. Hmm, Santa is always watching. <laughs> and this movie ends with a photo too. Or at least a sound effect of a photo with an awkward looking freeze frame. I appreciate the consistency of the ending so far at least. Boom! Up last, I've got an odd looking one. Twas the night before Christmas for VHS. I don't know about you guys, but nothing says Christmas to me like a rat. This movie, or should I say film, is a quote, charming retelling of the poem Twas the Night Before Christmas by Clement Clark Moore. And if that wasn't enough to sell you on it, it also has lilting music. Lilting. I actually don't know what that means. 
<laughs> you might think that you couldn't make a very good movie based 100% on a short poem from the early 1800s, and you'd be right. But hey, everything's subjective. Maybe a movie with a 40 second scene of children sleeping that's repeated multiple times and a minute and 10 second long scene of dancing sugar plums set to incredibly dull music is right up your alley. Dude, this music is lilting! Lilting! Yeah! Over five minutes into this brain-melting movie and absolutely nothing has happened unless you count the children breathing ludicrously heavily 8,000 times per minute. Until finally, Saint Nick shows up. I sprang from my bed. <laughs> Yeah, baby! That's what I've been waiting for! That's what it's all about! Woo! Away to the window, I flew like a flash. <laughs> So Santa, who's apparently two feet tall, is here to fill the stockings, presumably with joy. I guess we'll just have to wait to see. And I mean it. You have to wait. You have to wait a very, very long time. Because first, Santa has to have a smoke. <laughs> then he's got to listen to the reindeer complain for about five minutes. It may be no problem for you, Comet. We have to work twice as hard as you. But mostly you have to wait through the dead time between the dialogue. I'm not moving another step unless Prancer stops kicking. He's got silly, skinny legs and big hooves. No, I haven't. You keep jabbing me with your antlers. No, no, no! <laughs> Everything in this is so slow. There's seriously five to 12 seconds of time between every line of dialogue in this movie. It feels like someone was supposed to finish the movie, but they forgot to like five days before it was due. So instead to fill time, they... Put a lot of time between every sentence. We'll all work twice as hard and twice as fast. Won't we? Yes. So Santa falls and then he falls again. But don't worry, the reindeer help him out. Looks as if he's going to need our help again. Oh. <laughs> This movie is so slow and awkward, it's almost impossible to even commentate on it. Finally, Santa makes his way down the chimney to put the presents into the stockings. And what do you know? It takes him forever to do that too! This guy spies on Santa and Santa creepily smiles at him. Or is he smiling at me? I'm not sure, but he keeps making this face over and over and I am sure that I don't like it. He was chubby and plump, and I laughed when I saw him, in spite of myself. <laughs> so this guy laughs, and then Santa laughs, and then this guy laughs again, and then Santa laughs again. And this goes on and on until eventually he leaves. Ho! Happy Christmas to all! And to all, a good night! What the f*** was that? Hey everybody, thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed this Good Will Movies episode, let me know. Hit the like button, leave me a comment. I'd love to do a second one. Hmm? If you want another bad Christmas movie, you can check out this one right here. I did it last year, it was fun. Or you can check out a Christmas video on my peeves channel. See you next time. Bye -bye.